Hey guys. So before I start this video, um, I want to give you guys a little lesson on how to get the uh, Jedi Survivor EA Fuck You Edition. Um, for starters, you you know you you have to buy the game, right? You buy the game. So uh, what you do next? You just try to launch the game like normal. As so, so it's gonna try to load. And um, yeah, it's gonna okay. EA pops up. So that's normal, you know, EA, you know, has to have their little grubby fingers in everything. So um, it's loading right here at the bottom. It's loading in. Hopefully it just it's gonna keep loading. Okay. All righty. All righty. Just give it a second. Just give it a second. Okay. Um, and yeah. So that typically happens where the game just doesn't um, want to fucking play. So what you do next is from here is you try to just get just double click, you know, the actual EA itself. Try to take a little shortcut. Hopefully that opens up. OK, it's open. It's open. So, you know, Jedi survivors right here, you know, things is going normal. Hit the play button. You know, seems like it's normal, like it's about to launch the game, right? And um, OK, look, look, it's looks like it's still trying to load here. Let's see what happens. Oh, and um, nothing fucking happens. So. How I ended up spending one hundred and fifty dollars on the um, Jedi Survivor EA Fuck You edition is that I bought the game on Steam a month ago when this game like first came out. And then after I got done playing Redfall and I think some other game, I don't know, um, came to play this, thought it was gonna be normal. Game doesn't wanna run, it just insta crashes. I'm running 11, 900K and a 3090. And when I try to launch this game for a split second, my GPU is at 100% capacity. I don't know what the hell is going on. I tried verifying the files, all that stuff. Ain't nothing working. So, um, yeah. So after you get done buying it from Steam and Steam doesn't want to give you your fucking refund knowing that this game is dog water, um, you just go to your local Walmart or whatever place that sells games and uh, you go buy Jedi Survivor on console. And so that's what I did. EA, suck my dick. Previously on Jedi Fallen Order. So, how are you holding up? What the fuck? I'd rather not talk about it. Is this oh snap, they got Force Whitaker in this game. 10 out of 10. Why does the evil R2-D2 gotta be black? If you don't know what Rock'em Sock'em's robots is, you're too young. Going for the ride! Don't slam! I've carried so much hate for you. They're doing all this talking right now. I'm trying to get out of here before Vader comes. Who's that in the back? Oh, oh no. Oh no. Their destiny should be trusted to the Force. I think he made the right call. Um, the ending was nice. And this game was really, really good. Overall, good game. I see why a lot of people gave this game a really high score. Now, on Jedi Survivor. Look at this. 20 minutes into the game and it's already running like shit. Nope. Oh shit, oh, I didn't see him, bro. 
I love doing like the wall runs and stuff because I mean it's so cool. It's it's kind of like it's the best part of the game, bro. This parkour. What? Oh shit! I take that back. It's the shittiest part of the game. All right, I see some enemies over there. We're coming in a little too hot. All right, come on. Ah, dang it. Let me try to use the force to get them off. Ah, whoa! What? How? No time to explain. Do you trust me? No. Hey, little guy. <laughs> okay, that's a new way to pet a boggling. You have grown stronger. No, I've only let go of my fear. We shall see. I think he should have told her that she was bald and that he was her father. As game development companies continue to release games that are broken doo-doo garbage, it looks like 2023 is shaping up to be a unpredictable year for gaming. The phrase don't judge a book by its cover comes to mind for the simple fact that game developers have perfected the technique of creating these cinematic trailers that captivate the masses. When done correctly, it can build hype and anticipation. If it so happens to be a sequel or a remake, then that will give the audience a sense of nostalgia. And we all know how powerful that can be. Games like Forspoken had a lot of hype surrounding it before its release, thanks to its flashy cinematic trailers. Unfortunately, it failed to live up to many of our expectations, but at least it wasn't broken. Then you have games like Redfall who adopt the same tactics, and you will believe that this game is good until you play it on console or PC, and realize you've been bamboozled out of $70 because the game itself is a unfinished piece of dog shit. Thanks to Xbox Game Pass, many of us dodged that bullet. Three days before this pile of garbage release, Jedi Survivor made its grand entrance. With Jedi Fallen Order being a huge success, you would think that Jedi Survivor was going to be a great follow-up. And it was. However, due to its horrific performance, we ended up getting shit like this. This game had every issue under the sun. There was stuttering, frequent crashing, horrible FPS drops, weird sound issues, and cutscene bugs that would cause things like this to happen. It's crazy how multiple patches later, this game still isn't fixed. EA did a fantastic job at screwing up this game at launch. They tried to fix some of the problems with a day one patch, but it failed miserably. Jedi Survivor received so much hate from PC players alone that EA had to issue a statement via Twitter stating that they are aware that Jedi Survivor isn't performing to our standards for a percentage of PC players, and they are committed to fixing the issue as soon as possible. If you scroll down their Twitter page, you will see the console players are experiencing the same issues as well. When this game is actually working, Jedi Survivor has outstanding visuals with magnificent detailed environments. Each planet you travel to differ from one another. Some of them are expansive and have several unique areas within them. Take the main planet hub of Kobo, for instance, has beautiful grasslands, settlements that have been devastated by volcanic activity, a muddy bog that can sink you if you don't get out fast enough, and then there's the mountain observatory that's basically a city built in the clouds. The planet Jetta is a planet where 100% of its ecosystem is nothing but desert and is dangerous due to its violent dust storms and certain wildlife. The map of both of these planets are huge. Thanks to Cal's tame ability, he can use specific animals as mounts in order to get around a little quicker. On planet Kobo, you can tame the space ostriches and use relatives to glide through the air to get to places that are otherwise unreachable. On planet Jetta, you can tame a creature that looks like a blobfish and a giraffe had a baby called a spammel. Jedi Survivor expands the customization options for Cal and BD-1. For Cal, you can change his hair, beard, and clothes. For BD-1, you can swap out his components with different ones in order to give him a new look. There are even more colors to choose from as well. Furthermore, Jedi Survivor is a beautiful game with great world design. Pair that with great visuals and characters results in a pretty good experience, but with frequent frame rate drops, crashing, and shit like this happening, it's hard to stay immersed in the game. Fortunately for us, Cal doesn't suffer from amnesia anymore, and on top of that, we start the game with all of Cal's and BD1's abilities from the previous game. The stuff you have to earn back is your healing canisters and increasing your force and health meter. In Jedi Survivor, Cal expands his arsenal. At the beginning of the game, you get a grapple that will have you feeling like Spider-Man as you traverse the game's vertical environment. Later on in the game, you will unlock the jump dash ability that will allow you to cover a good amount of distance, especially when it's paired with the double jump. When it comes to lightsabers, Jedi Survivor turns up the heat. There are now five different fighting stances that you can choose from so that you can take your enemies out with style and showmanship that only a Jedi can pull off. 
you have single stance, double blade stance, and dual wield stance that return from the previous game. The two new stances are cross guard stance and blaster and blades. Cross guard stance turns Cal's lightsaber into a two handed weapon with great offensive power and defense, but is severely lacking in the speed department. Blaster and Blades equips Cal with the old Dirty Harry so he can bust a cap in his enemies and doesn't have to get up close and personal. Each stance has their own skill tree, so I suggest that you pick two of your favorite stances to put skill points in because you won't be able to get every skill in the game with just one playthrough. There are also new force powers that you can use in tandem with your lightsaber stances. You can have certain enemies do your bidding by tricking them into attacking their comrades with the confused ability. Then you can use the lift ability to levitate enemies to get some easy damage or while they're in the air you can slam them down to the ground with tremendous force. Both lift and slam abilities can be used on specific objects. The gameplay overall was amazing. As for the combat specifically, with more stances and force powers compared to Fallen Order was a step in the right direction and I enjoyed every second of it. On top of that, with the addition of new abilities and mechanics made the experience unforgettable. If you're thinking about playing Jedi Survivor, I recommend you play Jedi Fallen Order first so you can understand the story a little better. As for the story, it takes place five years after the events of the previous game, and our main protagonist, Cal Kestis, continues to battle against the Empire. Unfortunately, he has parted ways with Seer, Grease, and Marin. As the Empire becomes more powerful, Cal desperately searches for a way to gain the upper hand in order to turn the tides. With newfound hope in a mysterious planet, Cal rekindles with his old team and additional members in order to build a new haven hidden from the Empire. Jedi Survivor tells a captivating story about love, pain, loss, betrayal, obsession, and overprotection. The story as a whole was darker and deeper than Fallen Order. Whether the characters are old, new, good, or evil, all of them contributed to the story in their own way. With great voice acting, character interaction, and amazing storytelling, this game kept me enthralled from beginning to end. Jedi Survivor had it all. It had an engaging story, amazing gameplay, interesting characters, and stunning world design. However, this game was overshadowed by its many performance issues. To make things worse, EA spent months trying to fix this game since release, and the game still isn't fixed. There was a point I felt that EA was about to abandon this game because it took them a little over a month to release patch 6, and sadly people are still experiencing some issues. Many big name review channels have given this game a 9 out of 10, and I would agree with them 100% if I didn't have to buy the game twice. So I'm going to subtract 5 points to the overall rating, giving it a 4 out of 10. That will be it for today's video. If you like this review, make sure to like and subscribe. Feel free to share your thoughts about Jedi Survivor down in the comments section. Don't forget to tap that notification bell in order to stay up to date on my content. Stay safe out there, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.